Welcome back. A, a few years ago, actually for many years, I had the opportunity to coach, to coach uh, basketball and soccer teams. For uh, just a little bit less than 20 years, I coached. I love, I love sports, and I, I really, I love coaching young men. And uh, one of the things I would do, I, we would practice, practice all week. And during that practice time, I would teach and teach and teach. I would try to explain to them different things that we wanted to do so we could win when the game came. And we would practice and practice and practice. And then the game would come. And I can remember I would have my tie and I'd be, I'd be there on the, on the sideline. I'd be watching. I would tell them, do, 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 do this. And they would, when they made a mistake, one thing that really bothered me as their coach, when one of my players made a mistake, I did not like when they would come over and say, well, coach, I made a mistake. Why? Because da, 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 da. I didn't want to hear that. I don't want to know why you made mistake. I don't want you to make mistake. I want you to obey what I told you during the practice time. That was the goal. And today, as we think about this verse in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, I want you to see, again, our, the whole verse we have been studying. Uh, it says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Well, today, I, I want you to see the, the phrase that's kind of in the middle, almost the end of the verse, that says, o, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. We we'll want to talk about that. What does obedience mean? That's another good, good word. There are many, many good words in this verse. What does it mean, obedience? I, I know you know the sign, but what does it mean? Really, it, obedience is when you and I surrender ourselves and our desires to another person. Here, it says we're to be obedient to who? Right, we are to be obedient to Jesus Christ. And so uh, today, this, this verse really challenges us in the area of obedience to Jesus Christ. And that's what we want to talk about. Today, Jesus Christ has a plan for your life or my life. And God wants you and I to be obedient to the plan of Jesus Christ for us. I was thinking about a Bible story in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel, the book of uh, of First Samuel in the Old Testament. And there there's the story of, of the king, the king uh, Saul, and the prophet Samuel, Samuel the prophet. And Samuel came to the king, to Saul, and he told him, God wants you to destroy this nation of Amalek. Completely destroy everything. Don't keep anything. Don't keep the gold, the silver, the uh, animals, the people. Destroy everything. Saul, the king, he was really disobedient to God. What happened is he destroyed most, most, but not all. He destroyed most of what was there, the people, the animals, but he kept the best of the oxen and the best of the sheep, and the best of the rams. He kept the king of that nation. He did not kill, but he did not fully obey. Samuel came back and he asked Saul, did you obey God? Did you obey God? And Saul said, oh yeah, I've obeyed everything. But he lied. He had not completely obeyed God. And, and Samuel already knew. And Samuel said to him, he, he asked him a question. He looks at the king <clears throat> and he says to the king, has God as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, and I, and I like this phrase, he says, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, 
and to hearken than the fat of rams. What was Samuel telling Saul? Samuel told the king, he said, God would rather you obey than you offer, offer, offer these animals. And you know, it's the same for you and for me today. This verse challenges, it, it, it challenges us back to this verse. God wants us to be obedient to the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, I want, I want to ask you the question, what does that mean? Obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. What does it mean? Let me explain to you. That blood of Jesus Christ here is very important. In the New Testament book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, it says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no, and this word remission, it means there's no forgiveness. Wow. Um, do you understand? You and I need the blood of Jesus Christ to have our sins washed away and forgiven. Without Jesus Christ, death on the cross there in substitution for us, we have the debt of sin still on us, the stains of sin still here. But uh, there's an old song that says, what can wash away my sin? The answer, nothing but the blood of Jesus. You and I have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now what the Bible says here in our verse today is that God wants us to apply the blood of Jesus Christ on our lives. If you think about it, if you go all the way back to the first man and the first woman, uh, name of the man was Adam, Adam and his wife Eve. They both sinned. If you remember when they sinned, they were afraid and they hid. Why? Because they were naked. They, they hid themselves because they were naked and they were afraid. And God said, I know your sin. And God provided for them the skin of an animal. So I want you to know some animal had to bleed and die to give their skin to Adam and Eve to wear for clothing. Blood was required from the first sin of man. And Jesus Christ offered his blood there on the cross. He, he gave his blood, the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood reminds us that we can be forgiven of sin. So now coming back here, we are to be obedient unto the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. What does that mean for me today, for you today? I think it's simple. Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ's blood represents the forgiveness of God. But many people out here that you and I, we're going to meet this next week, many of those people, they don't know about Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And God wants you and I to be obedient, to go and tell. God wants you and I to be willing not to hold for ourselves this wonderful truth that we can be forgiven of sins. Don't hold it for yourself. God wants you and I to tell it wherever we go this next week. So I want to challenge you. Be obedient to the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't hold that message to yourself. Tell the people that you will meet this next week about Jesus' offering of forgiveness of sin.